We live in a world where things are always changing. Sometimes the changes are minor and almost imperceptible. Other times they can be very drastic and sudden. And so we look for a refuge, a place that's safe for, from changes that would alter our lives too much. We look in our minds and what do we see? As the Buddha said, the mind is so quick to change that there's nothing you can compare it to. It's quicker than anything else. So we've got to do something about that, because otherwise we have no refuge at all. This is where it's good to look at the Buddha's second tetrad in his breath meditation instructions. To your focus on the breath. As he said, the fact that you are paying careful attention to the breath, that in and of itself is a feeling. What kind of feeling are you creating? It's a strange statement that an act of attention would be a feeling. But I think what he's referring to is the fact that feelings are fabricated. They come from some potentials from the past, the fact that you have this body in this condition right now, this mind in this condition right now comes from a lot of things you've done in the past. But those things from the past are just potentials. What you do right now can choose which potentials you're going to focus on and play a very large role in determining what actions from the past really will have an impact in the present moment. It's almost as if you can go back and change things from the past. At least you change the effect they have. And you want to take advantage of that. So this fact that you're paying careful attention to the breath moves you into the area of feelings as a frame of reference. And in the Buddha's second tetrad, he talks about four steps. One is learning how to breathe or determining that you are going to breathe in and out with a feeling of rapture. In other words, breathe in a way that gives energy. It gives a sense of fullness to the body, and from there the mind will pick up a sense of fullness as well. When the Buddha talks about developing rapture, he says there are potentials in the body for rapture, and paying appropriate attention to them is what gives rise to rapture. It doesn't tell you much, it gives you a general idea. Where are those potentials, what are those potentials, and how do you pay appropriate attention to them? One way you might try is thinking of some part of the body that's not central to the torso, something that's, say, out in your hands and your feet, and try to relax your hands and your feet as much as possible. And if you feel any sense of change in the amount of tension, very subtle it might be, in the hands or the feet as you breathe in or breathe out, relax that tension, relax it, relax it. So there's no difference between the sensation there when you're breathing in, no different from when you're breathing out. And allow it to stay that way. Don't let anything interfere with it. And if you can maintain that attention, then you find that there'll be a sense of fullness. The blood flows into those parts of the body. And there's a fullness that comes with that. See if you can maintain that. And once it's there, see if you can allow it to spread up. If you're focusing on your hands, allow it to spread up the arms. If you're focusing on your feet, of course, allow it to spread up the legs. And allow the breath to find whatever rhythm allows you to have that sense of fullness spread up from those parts. Other people find that a sense of fullness starts in the middle of the chest. And again, allow that part to feel open and relaxed. with as little disturbance as possible from the breathing. And if that feels comfortable, then allow that to spread. If it doesn't feel comfortable, then go back to the hands and the feet. What you're doing is taking a potential that doesn't seem like much to begin with, just the fact that your hands are relaxed. But if you protect it, John Fung would use the word prakong, which is the word they use for when a child is learning to walk, and you're walking behind the child. And you're not grabbing onto the child because you want the child to walk on its own. 
but at the same time your hands are a few inches away, so that in case anything happens, the child trips, you catch it right away. You want to have that hovering around kind of attitude, the sense of well-being. After a while, the fullness may get to seem a little bit much, and so the next step is to breathe in and out, sensitive to pleasure. And it's a similar sort of thing. Find the areas of the body that feel good. As you breathe in, feel good as you breathe out. And see if you can let that sense of feeling good spread. It's different from rapture simply in the sense that it's not quite so full. And it's not the same energetic quality. It's cooler. As you get to do this, you begin to realize there these feelings are going to have an impact on the mind. The feeling of ease, the feeling of fullness. And you want to take note of that fact. This is what the Buddha calls jitta sankara, mental fabrication. These are the things that have an impact on the mind. And there are also other things that are coming into play here, which, is, which are perceptions. And again, you're, as you're focusing on the hands, as you're protecting that sense of well-being, protecting the sense of ease that goes to the body, you have to hold certain perceptions in mind. These are the images you hold in mind or the words you hold in mind. They're not full sentences. They're just basic ideas, basic little pictures by which the mind communicates with itself and communicates with the body. It'll have an impact on the body and the mind. And you ask yourself, your perception of the breathing, is it getting in the way of your concentration or is it helping it? If you have a feeling that the breath has to struggle in order to get in, okay, that's not going to be a helpful perception. We have only two little holes, i.e. the nostrils, and that's the only place the breath can come in and out of the body. What happens if they get plugged up? Very different if they're not plugged up. It's an awfully tiny spot for the breath to come in, saturate the whole body. This is when you want to hold the perception of the body, the whole body breathing, that the pores breathe as well. And that'll change the way you sense the breathing. It'll make it a lot easier for the mind to settle down and drop a lot of its burdens in trying to push the breath here, pull it there. As soon as you breathe in, everything comes in. Hold the perception that the breath is just waiting to come in while you allow it. You don't have to do any pulling. Another good perception to hold in mind is the one that if, as soon as you are aware that the breath is coming in, a subtle breath has already gone throughout the whole body. And if you can hold that perception in mind, you'll see that it really is true. Now, if someone may say, well, the perception itself is creating that, but you'll see how real it feels, and it's helping you to settle down. So it's a useful perception. So what we're doing is we're investigating to see how feelings and perceptions shape our mind. And then the final step in, that's, in this tetrad, as the Buddha said, is to allow this process of fabrication or shaping to grow calm. In other words, you see which feelings and which perceptions give rise to one little level of concentration and how you can change those feelings, change the perceptions, and see if it gets you to a deeper level. Now, in technical terms, this can take you all the way to the highest of the formless jhanas. The question might be, well, but the fourth jhana, the breath, is stopped. So how are we talking about breath meditation? What I think the Buddha is referring to here is that when you're moving from one jhana to another, it has to be a moment at least of evaluation. At that moment there will be some breathing. You evaluate, okay, this perception is a little bit too gross, I want to have a more subtle one. The perception of having a form of the body is grosser than a perception of thinking of perceiving the body as just a mist of sensations. The perception of the space between that mist is a more subtle perception still. The perception of the awareness of that space, that's even more subtle, more common. Letting go of the perception of the mind being one with its object, that's even more common. You finally get to the point where you know where you are, but you don't have a label for it. And 
that's even more common. You can pursue this. It takes time. You, have, you wanted to be able to develop the stages. I was reading just now someone talking about developing John and saying, well, you want to be able to stay in a particular John at least five minutes, which is a ridiculously small amount of time. Once you've got this perception, even even when you leave the meditation, say you've got a perception of space, see if you can maintain that. You may not be in jhana, but it's good to hold on to that perception as you go through the day. It'll change the way you relate to things. Just think about it. everything you see is permeated by space. Every atom has more space than it has matter. And think of all the space going through everybody you deal with, every every place you go, everything you see. And you find that that perception has a really good impact on the mind, because it's knowledge of perception and feeling and the role they have in shaping the mind is one of the things that will be most useful in learning how to make your mind more reliable. If you learn how to focus on the breath in a way that gives sense to ease and rapture, and learn how to do that whenever you need it, the mind will be a lot less irritable a lot less likely to regard some incident as something just too much to take, where it suddenly snaps and its goodness disappears, its calm and equanimity, its patience disappears. If those things can disappear, you're really up the creek. You don't know what your mind is going to do. If you learn how to feed it well with good feelings and good perceptions, find out which perceptions help you get through a tough situation, get, through, get you through a situation where it's just one long grind. How can you do that without letting it grind you down? We learn how to perceive things in a way that you're outside them. They can't reach you. No matter how bad things get outside, you've got something inside that is more reliable, that is yours. A sense of well-being that nothing outside can touch. Hold that perception in mind. And the Buddha, when he was teaching meditation to Rahula, the very first thing is make your mind in tune with the earth. He's teaching him to hold a perception in mind. Just as earth can stand anything that's thrown on the earth, it doesn't shrink away from disgusting things. Okay, you're dealing with things that are unpleasant, you don't have to shrink away. Hold that perception in mind, you find that your patience grows a lot stronger, a lot more reliable, a lot more resilient. So you've got feelings you can work with that you can create by simply paying attention to the breath, learning how to pay attention with the right touch. Then you learn the role of perception in either weakening or strengthening the mind. You don't want a weak mind, so you work on the perceptions to strengthen it. And this way you find that you can develop this inner mainstay. As the Buddha says, the self is its own mainstay. Well, if the self is not reliable, it means you have no mainstay at all. If your mind is constantly changing, so quick to change that nothing else can be compared to it, you're really in bad shape. But if you learn that you can use perceptions and use feelings to shape the mind, and the way you relate to your breath has a large role to play in this, because it gives you a place to stand as you watch this happening, you've got that good breath energy that you can draw on to develop the kinds of feelings you want. then you find you can develop a lot more patience, a lot more endurance. The mind can be on a more even keel, and much less likely to tip over. Because you're getting more and more skilled at the things that shape the mind. And you can use that skill to a lot of good ends.